Hi everyone and welcome to part one of this tutorial where we'll be looking at the creation of complex geometry just using some of the tools you already have with your Revit Structure Suite. So what we're going to do here in part one is focus on creating uh, complex surfaces in AutoCAD and then rationalizing those surfaces so we can then consume and use those within Revit Structure to create something like a space frame. So we're running AutoCAD at the moment and you can see we have AutoCAD 2012 running with the 2D ribbon. So first thing I'm going to do is just switch my workspace here into 3D modeling. Okay, it just takes a few seconds and you now see we have 3D modeling tools along the top. So we're going to start off by having a look at some surface modeling. Now you can see I've got a very simple wireframe here. I just have um, some objects created in 3D, as you can see there. Um, if, you're, if you're wondering how we create those objects, basically they're just wires. So I can go to the uh, draw line command in here, pick a start point, point the mouse up, and then you'll see that I'm actually drawing up the z-axis. So for example, if the height is uh, 7 meters, I'll just type in 7,000 there. It may be come across here for 20 meters, yeah, and then down another 7,000. Okay, then at its simplest state, I could actually create a second wire in here. Maybe this is two meters high at this point. And then it might be that we've just got a very simple arc actually spanning across the top. Now, there will be times when you need to create or change the UCS here. So what I'm going to do here is just use the UCS command. So I just type in UCS on the command bar. Pick the X direction and then the Y direction. And now, of course, I can go and create my uh, arc, my three-point arc, across the top of that. Yep, then we can delete that information there, put the UCS back to its world position, maybe copy the information back yep, down to the depth of the uh, building. Again, I could make that 20 metres. And then, of course, it's just a case of actually joining those wires together. Okay, so we have uh, some of the wires created here. Now I'm going to show you two techniques to actually generate this surface. The first technique is going to be using some of the new surfacing tools within AutoCAD 2012. I mean, to be honest now, we have uh, tools just as good as we have in Rhino. So we're going to come along here and use the loft command. I'm going to pick the cross sections in order. So I'll pick those two sections there. And you can see instantly AutoCAD's made the surface, but in fact what it's actually doing is it's not taking any account of these curved side rails that I'm using. So I just press return there. And then if I right mouse click here, you can see I can use guides. So I'm going to pick the two guides here. And instantly you'll see the surface responds to that. And now we have that surface. Now, as I say, this is a, a, a proper NURB surface. So what that means, if I uh, select this NURB surface and we go and have a look at the properties window here, for example here I could actually uh, show a CV hole yeah, like this and then with, with CV hole editing we're able to just, uh, pick any points like this and actually start to pitch the surface up a bit. So it is like a proper NURB surface. Okay, so I'm going to switch that off for the moment. I don't actually uh, need those on. So we'll come out of properties here and you can see I can actually show or hide the CVs from the simple uh, ribbon at the top here. So we'll hide the CVs there. Now that's the first section but what I want to do is I want to now work out how my space frame is going to uh, go across the, the surface here. So I'm just going to change uh, layers here. So I've got a few layers set up. So I'm just going to go for um, surface layer here. We'll go into a plan view. Okay, What I'm going to do is just decide maybe that I want a wire coming through here. Let's just move that to the corner point, something like that. And then I'll offset. Now I'll just do a few of these just so you can see the principle here. So we're going to offset these lines and we'll do it uh, with multiple on as well, like that. Now go for multiple again, maybe something like that. And then I'll draw a line going the other way. Again, we'll oppose that at 45 degrees and we'll offset this as well. Again, you could take more care than me in setting these, these wires out. Okay. So you can see what we have here. We have a simple uh, grid on the plane that we want to now basically project up to this surface. 
So if you go to the surface ribbon, what you'll actually see on the surface ribbon here is some relatively new tools to allow us to project um, lines or curves that we've drawn to a surface. Yeah. So basically, I'm going to select all the curves so we can pick all of these in one hit, which is very productive. Press return and then select the surface. Okay, it's going to take a few seconds, but what it will do is actually project all of those wires up onto the surface, like so. So you can now see we have some fairly complex geometry going on there. Now, what I'm going to do at this stage is actually go back and switch the uh, the green layer off. Yep, so we'll switch wires off there. And you can now see that we have the resulting uh, points that we want. Now, the thing is, what we really want to do is better actually draw straight portions of lines between these curves yep, to make it easier to actually fabricate and manufacture. So I'm going to go into my snap settings here. We'll clear all the snaps in this case, and I'm just going to have an intersection, uh, sorry, an apparent intersection on. And again, I'll change my layer across, so I'm going to go back to my um, wires for Revit layer now. And then what we can do is we can literally just start to come around here and actually select all of the snap points. Now, obviously it'd be a fairly um, time-consuming process to go around and do this, but at least you've got full control over how you're actually creating the geometry for the space frame. So now if I turn the um, surface layer off there, you can see the sort of thing we're going to end up with, and that would actually then cross-populate through the surface. Now, another way of doing it is actually to use mesh modeling. So I'm going to just demonstrate this on this uh, next portion here. So we'll go back to the uh, mesh ribbon in this case. And this is quite old. You can actually do this uh, in some you know, pretty ancient versions of AutoCAD now. And what this is actually relying on is mesh modeling. So I'm going to start off by clicking um, the edge surface command up here. And we can select the data that we want, which are these three edges here. And you can see that AutoCAD creates a mesh. Now the beauty with this command is that that mesh is already faceted, so I haven't got to actually go around and actually draw all of those facets. The only slight um, disadvantage with this is I'm kind of sort of stuck with how it's actually generated the mesh, i.e. all of the lines are horizontal and vertical. So if I like, wanted um, a diagonal pattern, um, I might be a little bit stuck. Now what I can do is I can control the number of panels that it creates. And we do that with two very simple um, system variables. So on the command line now, I'm going to type in a, a variable here, surf tab one. And this is how many facets I want in, in one direction. So I'm going to put in there 24. Um, then I'll go to surf tab two, which is the opposite direction. And we'll set that also to 24. So if I now go back and actually generate that surface again, like so, you can see we have a much denser mesh there. Okay, now the mesh itself, I can pick on this and we can go to explode, just the normal explode command. What that does is that breaks it now down into separate panels, as you can see here, which are basically regions. Now at this point, I could take that directly across into Revit structure to actually start to generate my space frame. Okay, so that's really the first part of the tutorial. In the second part, we'll have a look at how we can actually get that information out into Revit create some uh, families and then start to generate our um, space frame on the roof. Okay, I hope that's been useful for you.